So after we wrapped principal photography, uh, I began post-production, so um, I did all the editing on uh, a home PC. Editing the first five acts was pretty smooth. Uh, we had almost all the footage we need, though we did do a few insert shots along the way. I didn't have a shot of Jeremy actually holding the puzzle box as he proffers it to Natasha's character, so um, I, I shot an insert of that. We also did an insert shoot with Lori where she's actually walking uh, back across the library towards towards the grimoire of the gash. Um, I didn't realize that we hadn't shot that, so that was kind of a surprise to me as I was editing, going, wait a minute, how are we going to, uh, how are we going to do that? We also had to do a little bit of ADR. We needed a few extra screams to, to kind of uh, liven up the, the uh, chaining scenes. Uh, the screaming was courtesy of, of Stephanie Dennis, and she did a fantastic job of screaming. Action. Ah! Action. Ah! Action. Ah! Action. Ah! I used Adobe After Effects to create the gateway effects, and also to smooth out a few uh, minor blips. Uh, for instance, um, a script and I think maybe the clapboard were present in the corner of a frame during one of uh, the better takes from, from Act 5. And it was footage that I really wanted, so I had to kind of edit out uh, the script and the clapboard. The gateway was, was very challenging. Because I'm not incredibly experienced, I really didn't know any better way to edit this footage than to paint it frame, frame by frame. And so when you're painting a gateway around a character and th your video is at 30 frames per second um, and you have a few minutes of footage, the number of individual frames that you have to edit goes up very, very quickly. Of course, there really haven't been all that many Hellraiser fan films that have been made and I really wasn't sure if I would be stepping on anybody's toes if I tried to go ahead and make uh, a Hellraiser fan film, so I asked some of the people who were most familiar with the material. I think it's fine. I think I didn't realize it was so many. I think it's absolutely great. I mean, it may be actually that they'll end up doing something better than the, um, the professionals have done. So God bless them, say I. Outstanding. God bless them. I think that everyone has a right and an obligation to to express themselves creatively, whatever it takes to be a catalyst to inspire that. I, I think that's wonderful. I don't, I don't think there's a delineation between a fan or a filmmaker or, or an actor or a painter. We're all just human beings expressing whatever it is that makes us feel. So I think that's necessary. For fans to go out there and to you know pick up where uh, Dimension left off, is fantastic because it belongs to the fans anyway. So I think it's brilliant. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think a new idea is always, a, a, always the best way to go forward. And sometimes things can get stale, and it's the fans they, they know what they like the best. So yeah, fantastic. Good, good to hear. I, I'm actually thrilled to hear about it. Until you told me, I didn't know. I, I think it's a, it, it's touching and wonderful that people were, are excited enough by stuff we did by the seat of our pants 15, 20 years ago and, and helping it live on. I'm uh, really intrigued to see the stuff people do and I'm delighted that it's happening. Uh, it can only go up from here. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I've started the ball rolling. I, I, I lifted the uh, torch alight and now I expect people to carry it onwards and upwards uh, and, and make it burn brighter and shine brighter than they were before. I'd like to see more of them. I mean, I think the truth is any fan film that's kind of made from the heart can only be good. Whether it's low budget or super low budget or ten dollars, you know, I think it's uh, it's got heart and yeah, it's a good thing, you know. I, I think it's 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 fantastic. I think it's, it's wonderful that people want to take the ideas and run with them uh, in their own directions. And I am all in favour of guerrilla filmmaking. Uh, uh, and I've seen a few of them, and, uh, with the exception of one. Yes, two. let me ask you oh, that one particular fan film, <laughs> Mr. Bradley. What do you yeah. think of No More Souls? I haven't seen it yet. No More Souls. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Thank you. Gary doesn't get to see any And good luck and keep making them. I think that given the limitations and experience that we had, uh, we turned out a reasonably good Hellraiser fan film. One that um, I'm reasonably satisfied with, and um, I think is a decent addition to the films that are out there, in terms of the storytelling. 
It was so much fun. I loved it. I would I'd do it again in a second, to be honest. And it was so much fun to film because a lot of the people that were there are like the friends that I see every day. So it was it was fun. It was it was fun to share this moment with them. It was a tremendously good time, um, despite the beard and despite everything else. I think even the guys in the Cenobite suits, uh, at the end of the day, had to call it uh, worthwhile because uh, it was a lot of fun. All in all, this was just an incredible experience for me. Um, being able to work with um, so many of my close friends on a project that means so much to me and um, being able to just challenge myself to try and, and make a film, which uh, I, I'd never tried before, um, it was a very rewarding experience and I would love to do it again someday. I think this gave Jonathan really crucial experience for him to be able to venture out into the world of adult film. Beanie cows are not real. F that.